Matt, you've worked all over the world um, in various media companies, some of the biggest actually, in fact. Yeah. Could you give us a little bit of insight into your observations around how Australia compares to some of the other global markets in which you've operated in? Yeah, it's, um, for me, Australia's obviously got clearly some great talent and, and actually it's incredibly progressive against some of the bigger market, more mature markets like London, US. I think the challenge with a market like Australia is, is attracting talent from across the world because it tends to really gravitate to where you have global headquarters, particularly I suppose from a media perspective and where you have major brands. So again, from working from London to LA to Tokyo and those kind of regions, you know, you, the, the talent tends to go where the business is being centred um, and that's a challenge and of course East Coast US and London in particular are big centrifugal points. So getting talent out of those regions into an area like this is, is, can be challenging, but I think that the opportunities around what's going on with Asia Pacific now are actually becoming much more attractive for that kind of talent to come into a region like this. Brilliant, and it clearly is a challenge and we, and we do hear this. I mean, what, what things can organisations do to help attract that talent to Asia Pac? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, obviously a very good relocation <laughs> uh, deal uh, will work but I think I think really it's um, you know we when we start to look at talent from abroad even within our own organization it's really fundamentally around what the company's doing the kind of disruption um, what's happening with the talent you've already got within that market talent attracts talent without question uh, it's, it's a raft of different things that you know even from my own experience of coming here in Australia part of what attracted me was the great combination between what was you know Microsoft as a global brand with Channel 9 as one of the most leading entertainment brands in Australia and that for me was a very rich uh, a rich tapestry of, of, uh, of territory to play in so I think it is a combination of the talent you've got there and the opportunity that exists and with the backdrop of what's going on in Asia now I think um, you know those combinations just have to be sold very very well and there's very rich opportunity here i think as long as then the companies are seen to be investing behind disruption talent learning development all of those things then you'll get the right people any quick tips on disruption itself because clearly we we, we talk a lot about it and we know that it's something that we need to um, foster i guess within our environment so what sorts of practical things can we do or do you think we've got a way to go down that journey yeah, it's, it's, I find that, I, I mean, personally, I feel that, you know, disruption does need to be taught. I get that there are great creative people mm -hmm. and there are great ideation people that sort of can also sit in their own room and knit their own yogurt and come up with disruptive ideas. But when you look at the absolute core of what, where people get to dis disruption in terms of great observation to very deep insight that is going to disrupt a market, that needs to be taught, people need to be taught how to interpret that, how to have clarity around what's going in particular market dynamics, particularly in new businesses that are coming in to pioneer and disrupt as well as, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big lover of the disruptors that disrupt the disruptors, right? You see a lot of that with brands, whether that's an Uber over an M taxi and cab charger, mm -hmm. or a gig walk is a great example in terms of that, uh, you know, the sort of temporary contractor employment market in the US against the sort of agencies. Um, I think disruption needs to be taught. The more we do that, I think the more powerful companies will become. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be taught, you know, with processes and values. So we need the right leaders and the you, right You education. need the right leaders, you need the right training, you need the right education mm -hmm. to be able to do that. In, you know, extracting insight into a strategic action that's going to be fundamentally disruptive in a market needs to be taught. It needs to be yeah. taught. And, you know, we, we unashamedly even employ techniques like uh, the, the Disney, you know, the Disney technique of, mm. of having the, the dreamer room, the, the, the realist room and the critic room. Even just simple processes like that work really, really well in terms of thinking about disruption. Great. Thank you, Matt. Thank Looking you. Looking forward to it. Thank Cheers. you.